I've been using WavePlug to reduce my EMF exposure for several years. And in this video, I'll share with you how WavePlug works and clear up some of the misconceptions many people have about WavePlug and EMFs and their impact on our health. Now, if you're watching this video, I assume you understand that non-ionizing radiation from EMFs, you know, from our cell phones, cell phone towers, smart meters, etc., have to potentially negatively impact our health. But just to make sure we're all on the same page, I want to quickly differentiate between ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. So I think we all agree that ionizing radiation, like from X-rays and gamma rays, etc., are detrimental to our health because they can break cellular bonds. You know, I think we can all agree on that. Now, a lot of confusion is around non-ionizing radiation because the assumption is, well, if if those if that radiation cannot break cell bonds, then it's probably not an issue for us. However, there is a lot of scientific evidence that clearly shows that even non-ionizing radiation from cell phones, etc., can cause tissue warming and can change cell metabolism, meaning it can impact how our cells produce energy. You know, mitochondria are the power plants of our cells. And in order for us to be healthy and to thrive, those mitochondria have to work optimally to use fuel substrates and convert it into energy to basically allow the cell do what it does. And if that is impacted negatively, it can lead to severe consequences down the line that might take, you know, years or decades to materialize. But at some point, mitochondrial dysfunction and metabolic issues can lead to basically all of the health issues we deal with on a in our modern society, including cancer, stroke, cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, etc., etc. All of those things go back to cellular dysfunction, mitochondrial dysfunction. And so thinking that non-ionizing radiation, even if it doesn't break cell bo bonds, has no impact on our health, I think is naive, especially because everything in our body evolves around electromagnetic charges. It's how cells communicate, you know, by exchanging electrons and and thinking that, well, you know, just if you if you impact it a little bit, if maybe the cell works a little bit less optimally, is benign. Again, is naive. But again, I assume if you watch this video, you're kind of on the same page already and you want to find ways, effective ways, to reduce your exposure. And so that's where WaveBlock comes into the picture. Now, despite its name, WaveBlock doesn't block EMFs because if you block your cellular reception, your phone, you know, would not be working, at least not to make calls and to use Wi-Fi, etc., and Bluetooth, you know, so it's not blocking anything, it's dispersing energy. And to understand how wave block works, let's imagine you're at a beach vacation and you're in the ocean and a big wave comes your way, right? And you turn around because you don't want to get, you know, that wave right in your face and the wave smashes against your back and you can really feel the power of the water. You know, you, you start to appreciate how powerful, you know, waves and current can be. And so then imagine you, you step out a couple, you know, more towards the beach, you know, past the surf, and you see another big wave come in, but it breaks before you. And then, you know, all you get is, you know, the surf basically. And it's it's not as powerful anymore, right? It feels actually very pleasant on your skin. And that's kind of the difference between being exposed to EMFs directly and having them dispersed with wave block. So wave block uses a non-grounding, non-metallic coating. It's a sticker that you can apply to an iPhone, to an iPad, to a MacBook, or to AirPods. And what it does is instead of blocking anything and rendering the device useless or reflecting or deflecting, you know, the waves in a different direction, like a mirror would. If you have a mirror in front of you and you shine a flashlight into that mirror, you know, depending on what angle you shine it in, you get this, you know, all that light back into your eyes and it's as blinding as if you would be looking directly into the flashlight. So that's not what WaveBlock does. Instead, and I'm going to show it then, I hope my editor can overlay it as a B-roll, on what WaveBlock does to light. You know, it disperses it in a way so it's not as strong in one singular direction anymore. Instead, it goes in all of the directions and what you receive, what your tissue receives is significantly less than if you would be getting the full force of that electromagnetic wave or that electromagnetic radiation. And so WaveBlock has actually done third-party testing in special laboratories that are free of any electromagnetic pollution. And they've and the testing has revealed that WaveBlock can reduce your exposure to EMFs on the non-reflective side of the sticker by 80% 
and on the reflective side of the sticker by approximately, I think it's 59 or so percent. So it's in the 50. So it basically cuts your exposure in half on the one side and in more than three fourths on the other side. And what that practically means is if you look at your phone in a wave block has the reflective side on on the side that you stick against the device. So if you have an iPhone, for example, and you, you put wave block on the back, then the reflective side is facing you if you're if you if you were to look at the phone screen right and so from that direction you have a 50 something percent decrease in exposure and on the other side an 80 percent decrease and what that practically means is that if you put your phone into your pocket with the white sticker facing your thigh and or your body generally speaking then you get an 80 percent reduced exposure to emfs while you carry the phone on your body on the flip side, if you use your phone, like if you hold it to your head, which is not something I would recommend, you know, I highly recommend using wired headphones or second best alternative is, you know, wireless, but with the wave block again attached. So you don't get all of your exposure, you know, into your brain because those two AirPods, obviously, you know, they communicate with each other and they communicate through your skull. So that's not a good thing. And so if you do that, if you hold your phone to your head or if you you know look at the screen, you know, if you type a message or what have you, you still get significantly fewer EMFs or a reduced exposure than without having wave block attached to it. So wave block is not made out of metal, and that's very important because metal, any metal sticker, anything or even plastic, there are some plastic stickers you can apply, but that have metal shavings on the inside, anything with metal can reflect instead of disperse, can amplify and act as an antenna. So if you were to put a sticker on the back of your phone that is made out of metal or aluminum foil or whatever, it would act as an antenna and potentially amplify the signal, thus exposing you to even more EMFs. And that's certainly not a good thing. You know, you want to disperse. You want to. You don't want to block. You don't want to reflect. You don't want to deflect. You want to disperse. That's really the difference between WaveBlock and some of the other solutions on the market. Obviously, the most effective way to block all EMFs is, you know, a Faraday cage. If you put your phone in a Faraday cage, like if you cover it in a metal enclosure altogether, then you would not be getting any EMFs from that phone at all, but also your phone wouldn't work. So that's really the, the trade-off. You know, best case scenario, if you want to be the safest you can possibly be, remove any devices that emit EMFs from your environment, turn them off, turn them into airplane mode. All of those things are perfectly sane strategies because they work, they're effective. But the thing is, if you turn your phone into airplane mode, you can't use it. You cannot receive calls. If you're, you know, use your phone for business and you rely on being able to receive calls, putting it into airplane mode is not going to cut it, you know? And so for th those are the reasons when WaveBlock can provide relief without completely mitigating or removing your EMF exposure, but it makes it significantly better. And that's, I would argue, well, better than, than not doing anything, you know? Now, the other thing that I've I've heard a lot when, when people look at my phone is, that, you know, it has like that cutout around the Apple logo. People are like, well, you know, it, you know, you're you going to get all the EMFs out of that, you know, cutout basically because there is no sticker over the Apple logo. Well, here's the thing. You know, WaveBlock covers exactly the parts of the device that have antennas, where there are antennas behind it. Underneath the Apple logo is no antenna. There is actually a big ass magnet that acts as the charging coil, you know? So that, again, blocks your EMFs from the Bluetooth and cellular radios and the Wi-Fi radio. So there is nothing from those radios coming out through the Apple logo that's reserved for the magnet. But everything else where there, are, where there are antennas behind is covered by the sticker. The same goes for the AirPods or for the sticker on the MacBook and some of the other supported devices, you know? From a pricing perspective, WaveBlock retails for somewhere between $40 and $60, depending on the device. I think the least expensive stickers are for the AirPods and the most expensive ones, because they're the biggest ones, require the most material, are for the MacBook or the, the iPad. You know, and the phone, the iPhone is somewhere in between. Now, I have a discount code. You can look that up in the description that gives you uh, a discount. You can use that. That, you know, gives me an affiliate commission and you a discount, so we both win. But here's the thing. WaveBlock works at what it's supposed to do. There are two or three independent third-party labs that have tested WaveBlock in a controlled environment. And that's an important term because some people say, well, you know, can you not just use an EMF meter at your home? You would need a directional EMF meter, which is fairly expensive. But even then, you would have to make sure that you have no interference from any other device, cellular radio, 
or cell phone tower or anything in your vicinity that can negatively impact your readings. And most of us don't live in such an environment. You need a lab environment that is basically inside of a Faraday cage that can prevent any outside exposure so you can do a proper test. And that's what third-party laboratories are for, like TÜV suit, which is one of the labs that has tested WaveBlock and has confirmed what I've told you before. It blocks 80% and 50-something percent respectively, depending on the side of the device. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It's very effective. It doesn't entirely block EMFs, but it significantly reduces your exposure. And that's important. Now, how does that contrast with some of the other EMF mitigating devices out there? Now, especially for cell phones and, and, and headphones, etc. Well, as I mentioned before, there are some devices that simply that are made out of metal and you don't want, want to have that because that either means deflecting redirecting or acting as an antenna and amplifying the signal, thus potentially making the situation even worse. That's not what you want to have. And then there are some devices, like there are even some, some necklaces you can wear or some little buttons you can stick on your phone that are supposed to magically mitigate and neutralize waves. That's BS. You know, there is no scientific rationale behind those devices as far as I'm concerned. They do not work, you know. The only thing that works is to disperse the signal well or to block it entirely but then you know obviously you cannot use the device but if you want to if you want to find a way to continue using your device while still reducing your exposure wave block is really the only solution that i've seen that works without negatively impacting or without making the situation even worse like with metal stickers or you know some people put aluminum foils inside of your case on the back and again, that means you're getting significantly more of those EMFs reflected from the back into your face if you look at your phone, if you use it on your head, you know, to make phone calls, etc. So that's not a good thing. You want to disperse. And with that, we're going to wrap it up. I hope that kind of explains what WaveBlock does, why it works, how it works, and some of the things you want to take into account in terms of what you don't want to do, you know, to, to not make the situation even worse. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you think that EMFs are fake and there is no issue with that, comment if you must. But, you know, I think we're going to disagree on that. I think that there is a potential, long-term potential that EMFs are going to cause more harm than good. And so I want to reduce my exposure. If you don't care about that, that's fine. You know, we all live in a free world. Most of us do. And so you can do what you want. I do what I want. And I strongly believe that WaveBlock makes the situation better. It's not perfect. Perfect would be not having a phone. But the second best option, if I want to keep being productive, is to mitigate my exposure, reduce my exposure. And WaveBlock does exactly that. So stick around, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment if you have any questions.